Welcome to the Gridiron. <laughs> All right, welcome in. Today we are mock drafting. Nice little. There we are. Uh, any draft tips or strategies Before heading we, into um, this year? Eli and I's strategy has been two running backs, regardless of who's on the board in your first two picks. That's kind of what we have found to be the most beneficial for a great team. I've even gone so far as three running backs. It's pretty much like my rule now. I do think mock drafting is a good chance to try different approaches. Um, change it up. Try heavy running back. Try doing a zero, zero RB approach where you, you know, push running back to the end and, and uh, just to see what your, your team looks like. Grabbing tight end early in a couple of versions, see what your team shakes out like. If you take one of those, Kelsey, Kittle, Andrews, um, you know, Either Waller. have done a bunch of mock drafts, and adding you in the mix is going to be the new wrinkle because we've kind of got our strategies down to a science now. We'll see how adding the guru in between us. Yeah, should be interesting. And we can talk about some guys who I think are going a little way too early in mock drafts. And I don't know if you guys have drafted on other platforms yet, but they are some drastically different rankings right now uh, from like the ESPN platforms. We're drafting today on Sleeper. Um, and they are quite a bit different. There are guys ranked high in some platforms and way down lost in the depth charts and other platforms. Um, so I do suggest to mock draft on the platform that you're going to be drafting from. So you're used to who's ranked on that platform. Um, definitely a, a good suggestion. Yeah. I figured as we got closer to August when we're going to draft that we transition over to ESPN and kind of redo the strategy. But I agree most with sleepers rankings, which is why we've been using them. Yeah. Also, it's a pretty easy interface to use. You guys ready to get started? Party. Let's do it. Let's begin. Boom. All right. Um, I feel like it's a pretty easy call here. So first, uh, pretty typical off the back. Um, except number one goes Alvin Kamara, which is a little bit different. Careful. See him dropping a little bit farther. But Alvin Kamara, Dalvin Cook, Christian McCaffrey, three running backs um, in a row. Eli's there at pick four. I mean, I don't think you could go wrong taking Saquon, but I think Derrick Henry, safer call right there. Saquon goes next, and then Tyreek Hill with the first wide receiver off the board. Um, top wide receivers, uh, Adams, Hopkins, Diggs, all great first-round picks. Um, Chubb, Taylor, Ezekiel Elliott, Aaron Jones, running backs. Um, I do think I expect a big bounce-back pick year from Ezekiel Elliott this year. If you looked out at his um, touchdown per rush last year, it was drastically low. Um, touchdowns are never something you can predict, but I do think Zeke has a big uh, big bounce back, especially with Dak back on the field. Those new weapons, uh, C.D. Lamb coming into second year, should draw a lot of attention from the defense. Um, so I'm going to take Zeke there. Uh, the guy who comes off next is Jonathan Taylor. What do you guys think of Jonathan Taylor's draft value there in the first round? Yeah, I was just about to say, he's like the one guy who I think is being projected way too high, at least in sleeper. I don't think he's a first round guy. Nope. Where would you feel, where would you feel comfortable taking Jonathan Taylor? End of the second round. Yeah. End of second, third-ish. Yeah, yeah he's, he's pretty... Like, he's like my RB 
14 on the board for me. So, you know. I totally agree. Um, he's one of those guys who came on hot at the end of the season. But, I mean, I remember back to last season, week, even week 10, Eli, you were very adamant that Jonathan Taylor sucks and you're even playing Jordan Wilkins over Jonathan Taylor, that he's going to have a way better season. And then Jonathan Taylor crushed it second half of the season. I think people are just seeing that hot end um, yeah, and uh, kind of inflating his value here. And then Marlon Mack is also back into the fold this year. Yeah. He's not going to go away. So I, I agree. I think is underrated as well. They yeah. do too much of a committee for him to be like that big of a number one running back. Yeah. I do think I do think Carson Wentz is a really good upgrade for the Colts, and I do expect their offense to be a lot more productive this year. For my yeah. first round guy, I want guaranteed twenty touches a game. Don't care if they're passing or running, but you want that volume, and I just think he's going to get more like some games with twenty, some games with twelve, fourteen. I don't like it. So again, after me, Jonathan Taylor went off the board. Then Devontae Adams, a second wide receiver. Um, Gabe come coming to you um, with your first yeah. pick talk us through it Chubb um, he's probably my sixth best running back that I have ranked um, just one ahead of Elliot I think and I think he's a really a solid guy he's definitely Cleveland's top option they have Hunt who they mix it up with but Chubb is a great running back and he gets a lot of carries and a lot of touchdowns so I don't if think you, you can go wrong with a bell cow if you draft Chubb, are you also looking to add Cream Hunt later on no, to I, grab him as a handcuff? I don't like the handcuff strategy. And I think that like Hunt is someone that you would kind of need to start based on where you would draft him. So I'm not they're trying both, to bank on. They're both pretty usable. They were both top 20 backs last year. So it's not like, he's not really a handcuff. He is a, a legit player, a nice flex. I was just curious if you double up on uh, Cleveland running backs. I, I kind of value him less. I don't think he's that good of a second option just because maybe he's like got a little bit of explosive touches last year. I think that might go down potentially. He, so. he had 12 touchdowns last year. I doubt he gets eight this year. Uh, yeah. And my next pick, my other best running back still up on the board, Austin Eckler. Hopefully... He doesn't get riddled with injuries this year, but he's really great coming out of the backfield. And we have PPR in our league, so that's really valuable for a running back who can get a lot of catches, which he does. I want Eckler ranked as my number six back this year. If those top five backs that came off the board here, I agree with. And then Sam, if I were you, I would have taken Eckler right there. I'm super high on him. Uh Around the corner from Gabe's pick at pick seven it went DK Metcalf, DeAndre Hopkins, wide receivers, then Aaron Jones on the turn, AJ Brown, who I love AJ Brown this year. I do think his he's being drafted at his ceiling. Um, so he's somebody who has to return on investment if you draft him in that spot. Gabe took a uh, third pick of the second round, that Austin Eckler, and then between um, Gabe's pick and my pick, Stefan Diggs and Cam Akers off the board. What do you guys think about Cam Akers? I think he's going to be really good. Yeah, I think solid low-end RB1. I like where he went in the draft. Makes sense. It's pretty reasonable. And the Rams have less of a committee now that they've let some other guys go that were splitting carries with him. So hopefully he takes over the role full-time. Yeah. Leaves me on the board. Um, Calvin Ridley, Justin Jefferson, Michael Thomas still out there. Keenan Allen even be considering. Um, normally, out. I think, yeah, normally I think I would go um, another running back here. I see Kelsey there. I don't think he'll make it back. Uh, but I'm actually, I'm okay letting Kelsey go. Um, for this draft, I probably would no normally take him there in a normal, um, normal draft. You see, he goes right the pick after me. I decided to go with Antonio Gibson. Um, it was between Gibson and Joe Mixon from running back. I both think I think both of them are going to have great years um, this year. I do. 
Um, so I don't think either one you could go wrong with. And I do think after Gibson and Mixon, I do think there's a pretty significant drop off from running back. There's a whole a whole tier. The next guy up there is get DeAndre Sif, Clyde Edwards Alaire, Michael um uh Miles Sanders. Yep. Those guys I think are the last low end RB ones on my board, then it becomes RB two for me. Yeah. Makes this pick easy for me, mixing it up. Yep. Uh so after me, Travis Kelsey, Patrick Mahomes, Eli grabs Joe Mixon. And then around the turn to end the second round, George Kittle off the board. And then we get a run of wide receivers here. Calvin Ridley, Michael Thomas, Justin Jefferson, uh, Miles Sanders, and Allen Robinson. Um, so a lot of wide receivers coming around that turn, which means that next tier of running backs is still there. Um, yeah. A lot so of elite. For me, it's between J.K. Dobbins and – Chris Carson. Um, I think those guys stand out above the rest. I am interested in Najee Harris, but I have a feeling like the Steelers are going to suck this year. So even as their bell cow, I think he's worth less than Chris Carson. And I think he's worth less than Dobbins and Swift. So I have Najee Harris just a little lower personally. Um, Maybe to simulate more of our family league too. Um, I could take Carson right here because uh, he'll probably go early just because we have hometown favorite. Someone Carson. Darren Waller still on the board, probably not going to make it back to you. So is Darren Waller somebody on your tight end list that you would want to grab? He's going uh, way too high. I think like right when I traded for him from Annie, he was having a pretty mediocre season. He was somewhere like tight end eight, just grooving along. And last year when I traded for him, all of a sudden he had like an insane six games to close the year. It's kind of part of the reason I won the league last year. I think there's some recency bias there. Uh, I think he's worth more like a fifth round. I think he's going way too early. All right. I grabbed running back, running back off the top of my board. Um, I do like a balanced approach, wide receivers. There's really two guys that I would look at here, Keenan Allen and Terry McLaurin. Um, I think they are still part of that wide receiver one category. Um, I think when you get the next guy, Mike Evans, Julio Jones, Chris Godwin, they start to start the next tier. So I think there's two guys left in that wide receiver one category. Um, however, um, I am going to hit running back heavy in this draft because I think there is another drop off after Dobbins and Harris. Yep. Uh, again, kind of what I was thinking between Gibson and, and Mixon couldn't go wrong. So I don't think I can go wrong with either of those picks. Um, I do. I think Dobbins is more secure. Yeah, let's, let's go with Dobbins. Najee went, goes next. So we'll see if um, any of those wide receivers, really those two, Keenan Allen and Terry McLaurin, make it back to me. Those would be my next pick. Um, I don't expect him to make it back through that turn. Um, Najee Harris, Mike Evans going next. And Gabe is on the clock here. Yeah, I really wanted one of those two, but I think I'm going to go with my next best running back instead of a receiver. Montgomery. Nice. Keenan Allen, Darren Waller, Terry McLaurin, Robert Woods, all off the board there on the turn. Um, I think Keenan Allen, Darren Waller, Terry McLaurin were all going to be my next pick. <laughs> didn't, really, didn't really expect any of them to make it back. Um, so it's that gamble you have to take. Do you want, you know, in this draft, I, w- I'm, I am going running back heavy. Probably would take a more balanced approach. Probably would have taken Travis Kelsey in a real draft, but wanted to see what running backs look like on my team today. Yeah, I would have taken Allen if he came back, but I love taking four running backs with my first four, so I'm going to take my next best running back, Gask. Love it. Mark Cooper, Chris Godwin off the board. Um, I think 
now's my time to grab who I think is going to be the best pass catcher. And keep in mind, my real d- probably going to be on a different team next week. So the Ravens. I think he's going to go to the Titans. I don't. I think as of my wide receiver one, I will stick with CD Lamb. Love it. Nice. Uh, I I do think he takes another step up in second year. Dak is back. Um, I think he jumps Amari Cooper as the one in Dallas. Um, I'm not a huge fan of having Zeke and CeeDee Lamb on my team. Yeah, I don't love Two that. Cowboys. Um, but two is best available, and it's okay with me. Julio Jones, Kenny Galladay off the board. Again, a lot of question marks around those guys. Julio Jones probably going to be somewhere. Any predictions for Julio? He's going to be to the Ravens. Baltimore. That's what I think. I think he's going Titans. He's friends with Derrick Henry. They got the cap space. Uh, Articles come out today that Seahawks are sending interest his way. And yeah, it's not going to happen. I hope that doesn't happen. I think our pass catchers are solid with our new rookie and then the undrafted guys we got. Here, uh, uh, I mentioned it before. I think if uh, Aaron Rodgers stays in Green Bay, I think they might bring Julio into Green Bay and maybe. give Rodgers that weapon, keep him happy. Be pretty fun. What are your guys' thoughts on Josh Jacobs this year? Because last year he was a top 10 guy. Now they add Drake and he drops all the way down to here. Pick, what, 45? I don't know. I don't know the Raiders at all, but I could totally see him just like going with whoever's got the hot hand. Drake's still great. Yeah. Can be great. I I value him exactly the same as I valued him last year. Potential for top five if he gets the receiving work, but Raiders consistently bring in a receiving back and not want to give Josh Jacobs any receiving work. Um. Whoops. Yeah, I'm seeing your draft there. Uh, right, uh, sorry, I did exceed- you want to? I exceeded my draft time, so they uh, put me on auto pick for a sec. Is that so, the guy you wanted? Uh, yeah, I'm taking a different guy. Who? is Thielen is the guy that I would have picked right here. Uh, I think really good value him this late. He's, I think, a much safer bet than Galladay, Jones, Godwin, Cooper, Lamb even. Uh, Pretty much know what you're getting, and I like that. I like the the stableness there. So... After three running backs, you also grab your wide receiver one for your team, Adam Thielen. Um, Was a touchdown machine last year. Kind of seems like he's a little touchdown dependent with Jefferson now in the fold. But uh, no reason why he can't. He caught 10 out of his 13 end zone targets last year, which is an unreal number. And... But we'll see. He looks like he catches everything in the end zone. So, Yeah, and I think he was a little banged up, and people are going to key in to Jefferson and give Jefferson the double coverage. I think he's going to be a guy that gets you, like, 90 yards and a touchdown pretty much every game. I like that. And then Josh Jacobs off the board next, and then Kareem Hunt. Uh, Josh Allen, uh, second quarterback off the board on the corner along with DJ Moore, who I love DJ Moore this year. I think he's going to be really big. Um, Deontay Johnson, Brandon Ayuk, Cooper cup. And then, Oh, uh, kind of skipped over your pick there. You like Cooper cup for your second wide receiver. Yep. 
cap it up. Mark uh, Andrews off the board, tight end. That probably would have been my pick. Um, Mark Andrews, I almost picked him last round, uh, but was hoping maybe he would make it one more. Um, no such luck. Um, By the way, Sam, I got 10 minutes, so we might have to speed through the next few rounds if we want to make it. I think I'm going to go back to the running back well. I'm going to grab ETN. Oh, nice. I think he's going to put up a lot of numbers this year. Uh, I think he's going to probably catch, I think he's going to get maybe 80 to 100 targets um, this year, which you give a running back 80 to 100 targets, he's going to be producing. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about ETN this year. Man, I have such a different opinion of ETN. I'm kind of a he's, he's running exclusively with the wide receiver core right now. So he's going to be that guy catching the, the ball out of the backfield, and they're, they're going to leave um, Robinson to handle the first, second down. If ETN gets every third down, I love it. Trusted guy from Trevor Lawrence. I think he's going to have a role kind of like Chase Edmonds last year. And I don't think it's going to be enough to merit where he's going in the draft. TJ Hawkinson, Kyler Murray, tight end and quarterback. Lockett for my first receiver. Just kind of the best guy left. Um, and then with my next pick, a couple of running backs and Lamar taken. I wasn't going that way anyways. I'm going to take T. Higgins. The next best receiver I think that's available. Nice. So after four straight running backs, you have Tyler Lockett and T. Higgins as your first and second wide receivers. Mm-hmm. Feel good about those as top options? Uh, yeah, I don't really mind too much, mostly because I think my running back and flex situation is really solid. Um, I'm going to go for like some flyer receivers in the later rounds in case they bust off and I can throw them into one of those two roles it's really going to be the weakest part of my team but i'm willing to take that for the top four running backs tyler lockett i think is i would not be happy with him as a wide receiver one because he's so hot and cold he disappears for weeks at a time um we saw that last year he was one of the most inconsistent fantasy options at wide receiver um he finished i think like top seven overall, but his consistency rake is like wide receiver 40, um, which is crazy because he just disappears. Um, the other way of saying top, that is that he explodes frequently and has a lot of big games, right? There's the whole bright side of that inconsistency is that he is mashing. He's, he's going to get you six or seven huge weeks, maybe game winning performances, you know? Yeah. I just, I like predictability. I like guys who are going to be consistent. Um, My actually top guy on the board was, I almost picked him last round. He's still there for me at wide receiver. So I'm going to snag him now. He's coming back off of an injury plague season last year, pretty much sat out the whole season. Um, But he is the definite number one in that offense. Um, So I love to have a number one guy here off the board. Um, Cortland Sutton is going to be my guy in Denver. And if Aaron Rodgers ends up going down to Denver, he is going to have a huge year. Uh, yeah, he will. Denver Sutton is a top 10 wide receiver immediately. And we'll know this by the time we actually draft too. So a little annoying. I was planning on taking Mike Davis next. He goes off the board right before me. Uh, I like his value in the sixth round as the lead back for Atlanta. I think he's going to have a mediocre year, but as a starting back, he's really the last locked in starting back unless Atlanta finds Gurley or something crazy. I love Mike Davis for his value this year. If he's anything like, I think he's an upgrade from what Todd Gurley was last year in that offense. Same. And uh, Todd Gurley was a top, it was a running back too last year. And so I think Mike Davis has a chance to 
Um, yeah, I wish I would have got him right there. I have yeah. zero interest in Goddard. I have negative 10,000 interest in David Johnson. I think he's worth less than nothing. I'd rather not have him. Um, kind of tempting to pull the trigger on a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers or Russell Wilson, kind of a locked-in QB1. Um, Damian Harris is a guy who I want on my team. I think he's going to be solid for New England, but I think Cam and company will vulture too many touchdowns away to make him someone I really want to start every week. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this pick assuming that this guy stays on his team uh, and assuming maybe they trade for a little more wide receiver help. I'm going to go with A-Rod right there. Grabbing your quarterback in that yep. round. Russell Wilson goes off next. Justin Herbert on the turn. So you prefer Aaron Rodgers over Wilson, Herbert, um, Hertz, Brady, Burrow. I prefer Wilson over Rodgers. I would have them flipped in my rankings, but I like having players from a lot of teams. Um, and I already have Chris Carson. And I don't love the quarterback running back duo. So had I not had Carson, had I had like picked Dobbins instead, I would have grabbed Wilson right there. Um, next, I'm going to reach for a guy that I think is going to have a big year and he's not going to make it back to me on this draft board. And that is Pitts. Yeah. He's going to have a great year. It's a little early, but, um, I was going to take him down where I was at on one of my two, if I could. Yeah. I'm, I'm, high on. I'm a little more interested in him if Julio Jones leaves. If Julio stays in Atlanta, I don't want any part of Kyle Pitts. He's going to be drafted way too high. No rookie tight end is really – in the last 30 years, there's only been one rookie tight end to have placed in the top 10 of tight ends, um, and that was um, – New York Giants tight end Ingram Evan Ingram his rookie season finish as a tight end no finish as a tight end six to seven tight end wise uh, I mean there's been some highly touted guys the last couple of years um Kyle Pitts is in the league of his own uh, he comes in to the league with um the highest catch radius. He's a huge guy, huge wingspan, and can jump. He, I think I saw the stat. He's going to have the largest catch radius out of any um, player ever in the history of the NFL, which is pretty crazy. Um, definitely potential. I'm in on him long term. Rookie year just takes too long for rookie tight ends to to really perform. So I'm kind of out on tight end there. Um, there's a couple of tight ends I still love on the board still. Um, I don't think I have to take one here. I think one will come back to me. Um, so I'm going to take uh, wide receiver again because I've pushed wide receiver in this draft. Uh, I'm going to take the guy I want, which I want, Debo. Nice. Um, even though I think the best wide receiver on the board was Juju. Did you finish as wide receiver 16 last year? I think a lot of us forget that. Um, he was super consistent. And I think the Steelers are still going to throw the ball a ton. Juju's not a sexy pick anymore in drafts, but uh, super solid as far as yeah. fans go. Very I would have taken Juju. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I also, um, going back to the pick before me, Damian Harris. I see Damian Harris and Mike Davis really similar. I love their values. I think both of them have are going to be solid RB2s this year. Um, and to get a guy like that in sixth, seventh round, I would yeah. be happy with either of those guys. Agree. Yeah. By the way, guys, I'm, I'm Do we have to call it now? Well, let's, let's have you take this pick, and then I'll pause the draft. And why don't we resume tomorrow and do a kind of like – 
sleeper dudes, second half of the draft type uh, cast. Draft good with me. Sam, sound good? Sure. So Gabe, um, I'm going to take Jamar Chase. Nice. He's somebody I expect to climb up the draft boards as we get closer to draft season. Um, I don't imagine him getting out of the third or fourth round um, once draft season actually hits. I think that might be true. I, If I were Gabe, my only pick of Gabe, the question is T. Higgins. I think Higgins, I have him lower than Boyd for me, and I have Chase higher than Boyd just because I think he has a higher ceiling. I like Boyd's floor, and then Higgins is kind of the wild card there. I'm a little bit avoiding Higgins this year. I like the wild when you card. Have, when you've pushed wide receiver like you have there and then grab two of them, both from Cincinnati, um, it's kind of a tough choice. I probably yep. would be switching up teams. I mean, I'm only going to be starting one of those guys, but yeah. with this next roll pick, with who you think is hot. With this next pick, he could take Boyd. He could complete the trio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whoever, whoever I think is going to have the big game that week, throw him in there. So let's look at teams so far. So Eli from that pick four position uh, at running back, Derek Henry, Joe Mixon, Chris Carson, uh, wide receiver, Adam Thielen, Cooper Cup. Quarterback Aaron Rodgers and Kyle Pitts at tight end. So so far, all starters and no one for the bench. Yep. Liking your team so far? Um, would have liked it a lot more if Mike Davis fell to me there. Uh, I'm gonna give myself a B minus. Would have liked it more if Gabe wouldn't have taken Gaskin. I want four starting running backs probably i would have taken jacobs in a real draft but uh i just like Thielen. so i took him kind of like how you took gibson you probably would have took kelsey uh so yep i do like my team don't love it my uh spot That's of pick seven at running back i got ezekiel elliott taniel gibson jk dobbins travis Etienne. Um, and then at wide receiver, C.D. Lamb, Cortland Sutton, Debo Samuel. I think very strong, got some depth, got my flex filled out. Um, I will be looking to fill tight end and quarterback here shortly. Um, and then uh, I'm very comfortable with my running backs. I might add one more um, somewhere down the line here, but really just be hammering those wide receivers at the end and hopefully one of them hits. Yeah, and I think your team looks really solid. You just got to hope Lamb lives up to the expectation you put for him there as your wide receiver one. Yeah, I, even if he doesn't take a step up and is the same player he was last year, I would be definitely happy with his performance last year. Um, Gabe, you got Nick Chubb, Austin Eckler, David Montgomery, Miles Gaskin at running back. And then Tyler Lockett, T. Higgins, Jamar Chase, wide receiver. Yeah. I agree. I don't think the two Cincinnati guys are the best role with that. I kind of forgot that I had Higgins or that they're both on the same team. Um, (laughs) I am really excited for these rookie receivers. I honestly think with my next pick, I'm going to take Devonta Smith from the Eagles. I think he's got a really solid chance to get a lot of catches. Um, but Devonta I like- Smith, I feel like, is is down there quite a ways on the draft board. Yeah. So you'd be skipping over a lot of guys between – he's projected pick 114 and we're at pick um, 83 right now. So you'd be reaching a bit. Maybe he doesn't make it back, so if you want him, you might have to grab him. Yeah. I don't um, know if there's any other – any of these other guys that I would honestly want instead of him, like playing on the, hopefully he'll get back to me because of the ranking, but I do think he'll finish higher than most, if not all of these other guys. Left on the board, wide receiver, Brandon Cooks, who we've seen get it done with every quarterback. He's always 
top wide receiver. Uh, Curtis Samuel now moving to Washington. I like his outlook there with Fitzpatrick throwing him the ball. Jarvis Landry in Cleveland, very consistent. Um, even ahead a little bit farther down before Devonta on the rankings, we have Marquise Brown, Devontae Parker, LaVisca Chenault, Corey Davis uh, moving to the Jets, and Jerry Judy in Denver. Um, but I do love Devonta. I do think he's going to be moving up draft boards when we get close to draft season two. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching part one of our draft. Eli, have a good date, dude. Thanks. Ooh. Yeah, that's why I got to bounce. Otherwise, I'd stay and talk. Talk about men all night. Football. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. All, All right, right take it easy. Mariners, go Hawks. This is the, the Grudon. Grudon.